News. My name is Nora Chimopi, and on the signing desk, we have Joya Shikombwe. The headlines. Zesco recovers over four metric tons of stolen copper cables. Zambia, Burundi to connect optic fiber. Preparations for the Mtomolo traditional ceremony advance. And West stakeholders in discuss corporal punishment. And now the news in detail. Zesco Limited in Indola District on the Copper Belt Province has retrieved over 4,000 kilograms of stolen copper cables equivalent to four tons from Nelketh Metals Limited after a tip-off by concerned citizens. Dollar says Zesco Senior Regional Manager Tom Dacker has confirmed to Zanis that arising from a tip-off by concerned members of the public, the corporation discovered and retrieved about 6, 4,600 kilograms of copper cables from Nelketh Metals Limited's limited in Indola industrial area. Details in the following report. While working on ensuring that households and companies are supplied with power as payload management schedule, Zesco has continued to grapple with vandalism challenges where some people during power rationing periods have been tempering with the installed copper cables and transmitters during dark hours in their communities. Zesco, after a tip-off by concerned members of the public, has since invaded Nilkant Metals Limited in Indola Industrial Area and has since retrieved some stolen cables. Uh, in ensuring that uh, uh, people involved, uh, those people that are behind the vandalism of our, uh, of our assets, are uh, apprehended and uh, brought to book. <coughs> Uh, as we are seated here, uh, we have recovered uh, closer to 4,000 kgs of uh, uh, copper cables. And, uh, our internal security team, uh, working with the state uh, police, uh, they have actually pursued this matter, and I'm sure in due course we'll be able to get the full details uh, of their investigation. Zesco North Senior Manager Security Services has thanked members of the public for their continued support in the fight against vandalism. Vandalism has been ongoing and we have been sensitizing the masses and the community so that we work together. You know Zesco is a public institution uh, enacted by an act of parliament. So we want to make sure that we work with the members of the public. Generally, like we've said, please, you are protected by the Whistleblowers Act. We will not disclose the names. Let people come forward because a lot of the public service utilities are also affected. Members of the public are also affected. So, Nukwai Tuma Nakapi, Tuluenkondoi, Vandalism Yuke, Pakti, we are touch each other in this country. We should develop, and you know, Zesco drives the rules of the economy because most of the people use the power. So I think that's what I can appeal to the members of the public to say, please continue supporting us. We are so thankful. Zesco, in the first three quarters of 2024, has lost materials worth 5.5 billion kwacha, with 1,500 cases recorded on the Copper Belt province. Jacqueline Mova, Zanis, Inindola. President Haka Hichilema is expected to grace the first graduation ceremony at Sancta Maria Nursing and Midwinfrey College set for October 11, 2024 in Lukulu District, Western Province. Provincial Minister Capello Mbangueta has confirmed this development today, stating that the head of state will also address public meetings in Lukulu and Mitete districts during his visit. Mr. Mbangueta, who is in Lukulu district to spearhead preparations of the visit of the president, also briefed civil servants in the two districts on the expected visit. 
government has signed a memorandum of understanding MOU with the government of Burundi to facilitate optic fiber connectivity into Burundi. Minister of Technology and Science Felix Somotati said the MOU marks the connection of fiber optic cable to be laid under Lake Tanganyika from Pulungu district in northern province along Lake into Burundi. Speaking after signing the MOU with Burundian Minister of Communication, Technology and Information, Leokadi Diakeseba, at, at the just ended 2024, Digital Government Africa Summit in Chongwe District. Mr. Mutati said Burundi will now be the ninth country to get connected to Zambia through fiber optic cable. He noted that the Memorandum of Understanding is a success story for the 2024 Digital Government Africa Summit, which attracted over 500 delegates who included over 20 cabinet ministers from 33 countries. Meanwhile, Burundian Minister of Communication, Technology and Information, Leokadia de Kaseba, said the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding opens doors for more collaborations between Zambia and Burundi. We have signed an MOU. This MOU flags the connection of optic fiber from Zambia, Pulungu, through Lake Tanganyika into Burundi. As you know, Zambia is already connected to the eight neighbors. With these projects, we shall now count Burundi as number nine neighbor. The private sector have already commenced the work to connect fiber and deliver it underwater along Lake Tanganyika. So myself and my counterpart will soon be doing the launch of the fiber. So it means that the, the opportunity that to create is that our brothers and sisters in Burundi will be able to benefit in the transfer and movement of data from Burundi through Zambia to South Africa, from Burundi to Angola, from Burundi to Tanzania, from Burundi to Mozambique. And that is what it means, partnership and collaboration as African governments. Les, tous les intervenants dans le secteur de, de, de la transformation digitale dans nos pays africains. Throughout the days, the three days, we have learned, we have changed, we have met, we have met a, lot, a lot of people who, who do matter in this country, who do matter Maintenant, nous venons de signer cet MOU avec le ministre. Cet MOU va nous permettre d'échanger des informations, de communiquer entre la Zambie et le Burundi ainsi que d'autres pays. Cette interconnexion avec la fibre optique à travers le lac Tanganyika va permettre à nos populations de rendre leur vie aisée et de faire croître nos économies. This fibre optique through lac Tanganyika is going to make easier to our, our life, our people, to make their life, their life easier. And also in the news, Commerce, Trade and Industries Minister Chipoka Mlinga has called on Zambians to promote and buy locally manufactured products as a way of growing the economy. Speaking during the Ndola District Chamber of Commerce and Industry 5th Annual Awards Gala Night, 
Mr. Mlenga said supporting locally made products will build businesses and also strengthen the Kwacha currency. Details in the following report. Businesses that have been fostering positive change in the community and the country at large have been awarded during the dinner night gala held in Ndola by the Ndola and District Chamber of Commerce and Industry on the Copper Belt Province. During the awarding event, businesses have been commended for remaining firm amidst the challenges that the country is faced with. We have experienced a lower than expected growth in the economy due to circumstances beyond our control. This has made it very difficult, guest of honor, for businesses to thrive. And the reality is that could easily discourage even the most steadfast entrepreneur. Guest of honor, I have some news. Amidst all this, guest of honor, amidst all these difficulties, we have seen remarkable resilience among businesses. Minister of Commerce, Trade and Industry, Chipoka Mlenga, graced this year's fifth annual awards gala night. Homegrown solutions, government should listen. The president has deliberately created what we are calling a public-private dialogue forum, PPDF. This is where even the chamber president, Mr. Kavai, sits. It is through him where your voices can be heard directly with the government on how we can generate policies, we can come up with laws where we, your political public servants in parliament, can implement into laws that can support your growth. We are making our own fertilizer. Fertilizer which was costing 1,350 kwacha per bag is now 850 kwacha because we are now producing it locally. You talked about Zambians not being proud of what is called made in Zambia. My dear brothers and sisters, we will never grow a Zambia we want to be if we don't buy from ourselves. Mr. Chipoka says government has set up a local policy that will be beneficial to the business community. What is in this local content policy, ladies and gentlemen, is this. We've drawn our lessons when the mines died, almost died. Many foreign investors left us with the dead mines. Now they are back in life. What is enshrined in the local content is this. We are view most of you who are traders, entrepreneurs, and doing business and supplies and contracts. Any new contractor from outside that comes into Zambia, they will not do business alone. They should partner with you who are already doing business here. To do business, here. business entities such as Dangote, Discover Insurance, Chichetekelo, East-West Construction received this year's award. The singular honor of being recognized as the biggest exporter in the manufacturing sector in the large enterprise category, which not only brings a valuable foreign exchange, but also establishes Zambia as a regional player in this sector. But more than numbers, our purpose is clear. We are here to build not just structures, but futures of this country. We must continue to collaborate within ourselves. Honorable Minister, the problems and the challenges that this country has, the solutions are here. No one is coming to save us. And I think we need to begin to have these discussions in order to find the solutions to the problems that this country is facing. This year's gala has been held under the theme Business Resilience Through Homegrown Solutions. Nelly Botazanis, Indola. In a related development, Minister of Mines and Minerals Development, Paul Kabusue, has disclosed that the mining sector has so far attracted over $12 billion in investment. Mr. Kawusue said that the UPND administration is determined to ensure that the 3 million tons copper production target is achieved within the stipulated time while the sector contributes to the country's economic transformation agenda. He was speaking in Lusaka at a press briefing ahead of the first ever mining and investment in Insaka next week dubbed Mining Beyond Copper, celebrating 100 years of mining. 
Mr. Kabuso has stated that the INSACA, which has attracted an attendance of over 1,500 delegates globally, will be used as an interrogation platform to see how best Zambia can improve on mining. Ministry of Mines and Minerals Development Permanent Secretary Hampenga Kaveta also stated that the ministry has received immense support from industry players towards the successful holding of the event. Zambia PS was at par with Chile in the 1970s. <laughs> We were at 500, 400 to 500,000 metric tons a year of copper, and we got stuck there. Chile has since gone to over 4 million. Zambia is stuck at 750,000. Where did we go wrong? Under the stewardship of President H.H. H. said, let's sit down and interrogate. <coughs> why we are where we are today. So this event serves as a timely reminder to the locals and world at large of how much we know what Zambia is endowed with and all the investment opportunities that harness, that await harnessing as we expand beyond traditional methods and practices. Further, it will highlight the challenges and opportunities that exist in the continent's mining industry amidst increased global demand for green energy supply and the growing need for energy in the region. We know where we want to go. And that's why you have seen by today in excess of $12 billion has been attracted in the mining space. Not pledged, real. Your presence, your support, you have planted a seed this Zambian mining and investment in Saka must outlive everybody here. Coal and coal mining industries limited is happy with the good policies that the new Dawn administration is put up in the mining sector. This has enabled us to operate well. We take the first break. Join us for more interesting stories after this. The Issue is a program that looks at topical issues happening in the country. Watch The Issue every Friday at 19.30 hours, only on Zanis TV, Channel 6 DTT and Channel 458 DTH on Topstar. Don't miss. We continue with the news. Chieftain is what weaker of the Namwanga people in Nakonde district of Mchinga province has thanked President Haka in the Hichilema for accepting to grace the Omtomolo traditional ceremony tomorrow, Sunday, October 6, 2024. Our reporter Jen Simalumba conducted an on spot check at the main arena and brings us this report. Mutomolo traditional ceremony of the Namwanga people of Muchinga province to be held tomorrow, Sunday, October 6, 2024. A check by Zanis at the main arena found most of the works done with a few final touches remaining. And President Hakainde Hichilema will be the guest of honor. For now, you can even see the preparations very, very are on the light position now. So the ceremony now is going on. On uh, 60th, we're going to host the president, he'll be the guest of honor for this ceremony. Chief Tennis White Wicker of the Namwanga people is happy that President Hichilema will grace the occasion. The community is equally happy that the head of state will also be present. President Hingabakesa and Shayana, 
ceremony yesu ili important ukulanga ifya wina mwanga ero tule kwata kone chimwe mwe pamulandu wa ba president nga baleisa baleisa mkumona nenta mbishe yesu cho tule bomba kuno motorbike riders have been urged not to use their motorbikes when coming to attend the ceremony to avoid accidents i would like to advise those who are coming from afar they should not come on motorbikes using these gravel roads on that day because uh, motorbikes are not very good machines to use on gravel roads. Uh, we have had some uh, past experiences of uh, fatal accidents and I'm saying, especially those in Nakonde, I'm advising the Nakonde residents, those in Natundu, Nako, uh, town and elsewhere, to park their motorbikes and come by cars or they can walk from the main entrance roads. Uh. Jane Simalumba Zanis in Nakonde district, Muchinga province. In other news, Ministry of Information and Media Permanent Secretary Tabo Kawana has applauded the media for its role in the development of the country. Mr. Kawana, who is in Northern Province, to appreciate the challenges the media is facing, is also expected to officiate at the first ever Provincial Media and Performance Awards. We have more in the following report. He has visited Northern Province to appreciate positive strides and challenges the media is facing in the region. Ministry of Information and Media Permanent Secretary Tabo Kawana praised Paige Akete Siko in the Northern Provincial Administration. We have come with idea to do the things we do around our media. We will also be able to look at radio stations, uh, appreciate the challenges, and also inform uh, the, the radio stations about some of the incentives that government is putting in place and some of the in incentives that we are about to put in place. At Northern Province Deputy Permanent Secretary Beauty Ondipiri appealed to the government to encourage media owners to improve remuneration for journalists. The remuneration of our people in the media is something that needs to be looked at very quickly. We have our people who are exploited in the media and they are complaining, asking government if we could come on board. Yes, we request that even as you speak to media owners, not only in the Northern Circuit, but everywhere else in the country, let's have a uniform uh, amount of uh, money that we're giving to these journalists. This has attracted quite a lot of people who are not even trained as journalists. And that is why you find that there's news that is sometimes sensational. The permanent secretary and his team later visited the provincial studio where he interacted with Zambia News and Information Services staff. We only have one vehicle currently, and also to hear that we could have transport, it's, it's really motivating. It's, it's a challenge here where we are. It's quite distant. Our funding has also been consumed in transport. In 2025 budget, we are getting extra number of vehicles. We are getting equipment, laptops, cameras, and all auxiliary equipment that we need to use in the field. We are also getting to recruit more staff to join and complement us. Helen Gwali reporting for Zanis in Kasama, Northern Province. Ministry of Information and Media Permanent Secretary Tabo Kawana has reaffirmed government's commitment to creating opportunities for the youth through various empowerment programs. Mr. Kawana said this during the first Ava Northern Province Media and Performance Awards held at Chikola Gardens in Kasama last evening. We have more in the following report. It's the first time Northern Province has held an award ceremony to recognize the contribution of its people in various sectors. The awards, which were dubbed Northern Province Media and Performance Awards, saw different people, including reporters in the province, recognized for their outstanding performances. Ministry of Information and Media Permanent Secretary Tabo Kawana officiated at the inaugural awards. Government has established youth resource centers in all provinces dedicated to enhancing the skills and capabilities of our youth. These centers offer training and development opportunities that will equip them with the knowledge and tools needed to excel in an ever-changing world. I urge our youth to take full advantage of these programs and resources ensuring that they are not only prepared for the future, but are active participants in shaping. The Northern Province Administration is happy with the initiative to award outstanding performers in the region. This is the first ever 
prestigious awards in the Northern region. We have brought this together because of one lady who believes in the talent of our young people. The media fraternity in the Northern Circuit have for a long time longed for such an event and we are grateful that we can push it together, bring them together in order to appreciate their art. The organizers and sponsors of the awards had this to say. Having you here means a lot to the young people of Northern Province. Specifically, let me talk about the media, the entrepreneurs, the, the people from the hospitality industry. We are talking about uh, fast foods and uh, also the radio stations that are here. I just want to encourage you that these events are a fine platform for all of us and we need to support them. Helen Wade reporting for in Kasama, Northern Province. The Circuit District Commissioner Rosa Zulu has commended Special Hope Network for improving the lives of children with intellectual disabilities in Mandevu constituency in the Circuit District. Ms. Zulu says it is Unfortunate that some parents have continued to hide their children with intellectual disability from society, making it difficult for the government and its partners to offer the required services they deserve. She was speaking in a speech read on her behalf by Lusaka District's work supervisor, Kosam Sewale, during the graduation ceremony of 87 disability advocates in Lusaka. Here is a report. We are all different. That's what makes us great. Some of us make slow, hard to hurt. If I let you don't understand, no reason to hurt my heart. Children with intellectual disabilities deserve love, care, and an education to help them in their development in life. While some parents hide their children's disability from society, Special Hope Network has come on board in Marapodi, Kabanana, and Matero compounds to assist parents on how well they can look after their children. Since my son began attending lessons at Special Hope Network, I have seen firsthand the remarkable improvement in his development. <laughs> Lusaka District Commissioner Rosa Zulu, represented by Lusaka District Work Supervisor Kosam Siwale, visited the community care centers in Mandevu constituency before officiating at the graduation ceremony for 87 disability advocates trained to champion the rights and inclusion of children with intellectual disabilities in the communities. Work being done by special work network is crucial to the well-being of our communities. Like the participation I think from the men is not as much as the, maybe the women. So there's an appeal like also the men participate in bringing up these children. Mandefu Member of Parliament Christopher Shakafuswa appreciated these noble services from Special Hope Network. We must acknowledge that reality that children with disabilities face significant challenges. Statistics show that 4.4% of Zambia's population, which is approximately 370,000 children, are living with a disability in Zambia. Meanwhile, Special Hope Network President Eric Nelson is calling for government's assistance with land to create a Special Hope village. Today, I humbly call upon government and our partners to consider supporting us in securing a suitable piece of land where this village can be built. Zanis reports in Lusaka. About 1,085 students who underwent training in various life skills at Lokashi Trades Training Institute in Kasama District have graduated at a colorful ceremony held in Kasama, Northern Province. Provincial Permanent Secretary Beauty Piri, who officiated at the ceremony, disclosed that 95% of graduates were sponsored by the government through the Constituency Development Fund. Gladys Nerinda has more in the following report. These are part of 1,085 students graduating from Lukasha Trades Training Institute in Kasama District. 
the students who were trained in various life skills are graduating at the state graduation ceremony at the trade school. Several Kasama residents and parents to the graduates witnessed the colorful ceremony that was officiated by Northern Province Deputy Permanent Secretary Beauty Undipiri. The government has prioritized skills development. Therefore, government through the constituency development fund has sponsored 95% of students graduating today. Lukasha Trades Training Institute Board Chairperson has pledged the school's continued commitment to providing training to the public. Therefore, I want to assure the government guests of Vona that all government programs and initiatives are well received and implemented. Lukasha Trade Training Institute's principal now gives an insight to the training. The youth with the skills will be enabled to participate fully in the economic development of our nation. To the graduates, the skills they have acquired are a stepping stone in their lives. We appreciate the government for the effort they are putting in. Gladys Nurenda reporting for Zanis News in Kasama District in Northern Province. Join us for more gender related news after this break. Woman Thou Art is a program that offers counsel to the female folk, sharing real life experiences and providing guidance to the women and young girls on necessary steps and conduct that will help shape and nature a sober society. Watch Woman Thou Art on Zenith TV every Wednesday at 18.30 hours on the Topster channel, channel 6 DTT and channel 458 DTH. Western Province Senior Child Development Officer Mutaba Akashawelewa has urged parents of Naoli area of Mlovezi district to stop using corporal punishment on behalf of children on behalf of their children. The call was made during the sensitization meeting focused on children's rights, early marriages and violence against children after some parents expressed concerns that withdrawal of corporal punishment has led to misbehavior among children in the area. Let's join Simfukwe Mwangala in the following report. In a move to protect children's rights, Western Province Senior Child Development Officer Mutaba Akashoelewa has called on parents in Mulaoli area of Mulobes District to stop using corporal punishment on their children. The call comes after parents expressed concerns during a sensitization meeting on Children's Code Act No. 12 of 2022 that their children's behavior has worsened since corporal punishment was withdrawn. Communities are concerned about uh, the issue of corporal punishment. They feel that it should be administered. Others were raising issues of what the Bible says and what the Act says. But there is what is called positive parenting. It is actually possible to actually correct a child without actually administering corporal punishment. Uh, one simple way is a psychological way, where you, do, you don't reinforce um, the traits or the behaviors which seems not to be desirable. And those which are desirable, you positively reinforce them by rewarding them. So that is one way psychology can help us actually achieve positive parenting. Mulaoli head teacher also urged the parents to find alternative ways of disciplining their children. It's not that every learner can learn well if he's just fitted, but it's just a matter of uh, getting the message uh, from the teacher and also the teachers to follow what is needed. My dear parents, what I can encourage them is that uh, most of the time they should just tell their children uh, the best norms. Uh, they follow what is needed in the community. So we find that we shall have better children. The parents appreciated the government's efforts but appealed for more guidance. The <laughs> Abana kuhula hande kakuli, kona amu bonama janki kacheku kibabangata. 
mama lulo areas kuno kenela kuno veza vatu kuno junking vatu mane kuno zwari komza vatu king luna ba shemi moko wa mola wa lusa ba kushapa ba nana ba twale kona ne lukupa kwa muso kuti kambe kwa kona hala na ikirefera ka percent ka kanyanya kuti ba nana ba konde Effective discipline methods are important in ensuring children's safety and well-being. Sifwe Mwangala, Zanis, in Mulovesi District, Western Province. Also on the segment, World Vision Zambia has handed over a refurbished ablution dormitory block for 65 children with disabilities at Chongo Inclusive Secondary School in Monza District, Southern Province. Speaking when he offici officially handed over the building to the Ministry of Education, World Vision Director Business Support Services Lazarus Manda pledged continued support to children and vulnerable people in society. Details in the following report. World Vision Zambia has continued to extend its goodwill gesture to uplift the lives of children. This time around, the organization has handed over a refurbished hostel and ablution block for children with disabilities at Jongo Inclusive Boarding School. You know, World Vision, uh, one of the things that we promote is our inclusiveness. We are learning. We want whether you are uh, with special abilities or without abilities or whatever definition you can We want you to have uh, an education because we want to see all children to have life in its fullness. So it gives us pleasure to be part and parcel to see that we provide uh, some good uh, accommodation for our children as they come for the boarding and also uh, good sanitation uh, places like that, like revolution block. Uh, and it's not just a building that we are handing over today. There are also some blankets that we are already in the dormitory. And after that, we also have some cleaning detergents and also some snacks for them to, uh, to have during this time. This gesture by the organization would help to accelerate and complement government's efforts to create a conducive learning environment for all pupils in Monza district. So inclusive school, we recognize as one of the boarding schools and offers boarding facilities for children living with disabilities. It took your organization, World Vision, to come on board to continue a beautiful structure that we have seen there. May you continue helping and extend a helping hand to children with disabilities. We are very grateful to you, World Vision, for your support, especially to this school. We're also grateful to see the because a number of our learners, you know most of our children with disabilities come from vulnerable homes where sponsorship becomes a challenge. So a number of them we have recommended and are in CDF now, being paid for by a number of local authorities around the country. The lighting system really we need it. If we can have a like solar, a solar lighting system, especially it works well for us when we, for some of our learners, have to use uh, diapers. So in the night when they mess up, they need to be changed. So in darkness it becomes really difficult. And also even for them to access the, the abortion door in the night, it becomes really difficult. World Vision staff also presented gifts and held a prayer session with school children. Zanis reports in Monza District, Southern Province. On the environmental segment, we effect a non-governmental organization has noted an improvement in women accessing documentation for land ownership in Chadiza district of Eastern Province. The organization has been working with traditional leaders for the past five years in an effort to help women understand the processes involved in land ownership. Jubilee Zulu has more in the following report. Strengthening women's land rights has important policy consequences for poverty reduction and gender equality in Zambia. This is why some organizations, such as We Effect, Hefa International, and Land Alliance, with the help from CEDA, has been helping women in Chadiza to have certificates of land. <laughs> Ana Bueda, 
kachi tatu lo mba na bula na pepa mhm mm jaka mba ka tana panga chani mara mulo mhm mm eh tina pele ka kuja kwa mambo mhm mm aha uh -huh. anapita mo babo mo vina choka aha mm -hmm. uh -huh. akamba kuti munika mbeko kuti vindu vija mba mba pindu mba pindu aha uh -huh. vija bebu ino aha uh -huh. muni toko dereko kuta serekere apa Okay. Azibwe la zimai na kalanga kalira kama bana wa zimai apeza kwanso ufulu mhangu za kuti na wazikita vinhu vayoka okay. eh hey, hey. ndio mawatani bani sira a relief is seen after 5 years of fighting for the pride of women to own land our discussion with some of the women who went to lobby to the local chiefs that they also need to have some form of uh, uh, certification in the traditional land. They were able to articulate their issues such that the chiefs they really understood their plight and understood what they were asking for. They were not asking for title deeds, but to be documented in a way that can be uh, that can be that can produce some proof when women want to invest in their land. And now we really thank the chiefs because they were able to give them an ear and to understand their plight and they are able now to help healthy women uh, be certified. The women are grateful for opening their eyes on land issues. <laughs> Jubal Zulu Zanis, Chadiza District, Eastern Province. We take our final break and when we come back, we join teachers around the country as they celebrate their day. Zambia Today is a program that keeps you informed on various government policies and programs. Join us every Tuesday at 18 hours on Zanis TV, Topster Platform, Channel 6 DTT and 458 DTH. Don't miss. Welcome back. In Muchinga province, teacher unions have called on government to make amendments to the Section 18 of the National Pension Scheme Act by introducing a lump sum pension benefit for contributors when they retire. Speaking on behalf of other unions during this year's International Teachers' Day commemoration, Zambia of Teachers National Leader John Mwape says concerns regarding NAPSA reforms must be addressed in order to strengthen the new social contract between teachers and government. More in the following report by Wope. The teaching profession is a noble career worth to be celebrated as it plays a vital role in shaping the future of the nation. In Chinsali district in Muchinga province, teachers have celebrated their day and called on government to make amendments to the National Pension Scheme Act by introducing a lump sum pension benefit for contributors when they retire. Speaking during the commemoration of International Teachers' Day, Zanut's national leader, John Mwape, states that despite the significant progress made in the education sector, there is need for government to address concerns regarding NAPSA reforms, among others. Well, we commend government for these efforts. We must acknowledge that teachers face a myriad of challenges. These must be addressed. The current structure of the NAMSA benefit package raises serious concerns as it does not adequately serve the interests of many employees. Among other NAMSA reforms, we propose an amendment to Section 18 of the National Pension Scheme, Article 
they introduced a lump sum pension benefit to contributors who retire at 65, 60, or 65. And Muchinga Province Permanent Secretary Henry Mukungule, in a speech read on his behalf by Assistant Secretary Bran Sichandi. The government recognizes the importance of teachers, and therefore, there is need for you colleagues to lead exemplary lives that depict the highest degree of responsibility. Government is doing everything possible to ensure that all conditions of services are greatly improved. This is why I saw that and uh, ratified uh, that the unions uh, can also assure you on behalf of government that uh, government stands ready to work with the unions in order to improve the conditions of service. Bupelombanya reporting for Zenith News in Chinsali District, Muchinga Province. From Chinga, we take you to Southern Province, where Namwala District Commissioner Ephraim Shandavo has reaffirmed government's commitment in uplifting the educational sector in the country. Mr. Shandavo says government has shown commitment to the sector as evidenced by the massive infrastructure development and recruitment of teachers. We have more in the following report. They are an important resource in driving the country's education sector. These are teachers from Namola district joining the rest of the world in commemorating the 2024 Teachers' Day. Namola district commissioner Ephraim Shandavu, who pressed the event, commended teachers for being pillars of knowledge, guiding their learners through the complex learning. Today we gather to celebrate a profession that shapes the very foundation of our society, teaching. As we honor you, our dedicated teachers, we recognize the invaluable impact you have in our lives. Teachers are the pillars of knowledge guiding us through the complex of learning, your tireless efforts, unwavering patience, and selfless dedication have nurtured generations of thinkers, innovators, and leaders. For Namola District Education Standards Officer, Sitali Ngula, behind every profession, in any discipline, there's a teacher. We just want you, and you know, you've also helped a lot in shaping the economy of this country because of the people that you produce as teachers. I know others, those that have gone to sleep, they remain there. But the sharp ones, you manage to produce a lot of people that today, I'm sure they salute you wherever you are. So all I urge you is to leave a mark all the time in these learners' lives. Don't leave a negative mark, but leave a positive mark. Positive strides government has made in the education sector has elected the teachers' union. What we need to acknowledge government is the free education policy, which has seen a rapid increase in the number of learners in our schools. We commend government for this, even when this comes with a challenge. While the teacher pupil ratio is reducing because of an increase on the enrollment of teachers, we also have an increase in the number of learners, which also uh, manipulates the other effort. We therefore encourage you to continue pushing as a government. Deserving teachers were also awarded in various disciplines for their excellence in executing their duties. Wailin Dapiri reporting in Namala District of Southern In Western Province, Mongo District Commissioner Morgan Akaveswa says President Hakainde Hichilema's administration is the first to have recruited over 39,000 teachers countrywide in three years since independence. Mr. Akaveswa said this during the commemoration of World Teachers Day in Mongo District, which was celebrated under the theme Valuing Teachers' Voices Towards a New Social Contract for Education. Here is a report by Namakau Kayombo. 
Today, Mongo District gathered to honor the dedicated educators shaping the future of our communities during the annual Teachers' Day commemoration under the theme, Valuing Teachers' Voices Towards a New Social Contract for Education. The event held at Mongo Sports Stadium brought together teachers, students, and community members to celebrate the invaluable contributions of educators. The district commissioner graced the occasion as a guest of honor. No wonder this year's theme emphasizing on hearing your voices because we want to know what you need to effectively nurture our children for a better subject. It is easy to see that government of the Republic of Zambia under the stewardship of His Excellency, Mr. Agaende Chidema, the President of Zambia, who values education who values the voice of the teacher through the strides that have been made in the area of education. And the government of Zambia has improved in terms of the recruitment that we've made so far, which is unprecedented, which has never been seen since independence. And the cumulative number of the teachers that we have recruited as a government of Zambia under the new Dawn government stands at 39,250 since 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, this teacher recruitment is a major driver in ensuring quality education through the increased teacher QQ contact time. In 2024, we, as a government of the Republic of Zambia, we are recruiting 4,200 teachers. And an addition 2,000 teachers will be recruited in 2025. Mongo District Education Board Secretary Ilutombi Disimba says education is the mother of all professions and that Mongo District Education Board has worked towards actualizing the presidential directives in the Ministry of Education. As Mongo District guest of honor, I'm proud to announce that we have uh, really uh, worked hard to ensure that the, pre uh, the presidential directives have been uh, actualized. We had a deficit of 19,000 guests in our schools, but I'm proud to announce to you, guests of honor, that we have distributed more than 10,000 guests in our schools. I'm happy also to announce that in the two, uh, three years that the new lockdown government has been in, uh, in, in, in power, guests of honor, we have managed to recruit more than 350 teachers among as Mongo district. So you can see, ladies and gentlemen, that as a district, we are not left behind in whatever. Namakao Kayombo reporting for Zanis in Mongo Western Province. Still on Teachers' Day celebrations, Sinazongwe District Commission and Chimonya Siakole has reiterated the need to value the teacher voices in all developmental programs. Mr. Siakole reaffirmed government's commitment towards making education as a driver to sustainable economic development. Let's get more in the following report. Teachers in Sinazongwe District have joined the rest of the country in commemorating their day under the theme valuing teacher voices towards a new social contract for education. This year's theme highlights the need to value the teacher voices in all developmental programs about Zambia's growth and development in the education. This day has been set aside to celebrate the teachers' efforts in upholding the standard of education in imparting knowledge and skills to the learners worldwide to ensure that the teacher's voice should be heard to uphold Zambia's growth and development in the education sector. This year's theme emphasizes the need to value the teacher's voice in all developmental programs being implemented. The DEBS has appreciated government efforts through the provision of free education, construction of school infrastructure such as classroom blocks, and running water using CTF. But the good news is that government of the Republic of Zambia is now head on 
facing all these challenges so that the work of the teachers are made, is made easier. One of the challenges was the pronouncement by the government through the Republican president to ensure that no child sits on the floor by the end of last year. To ensure that every school has running water. The teacher union has acknowledged the positive strides made by government in the provision of quality education. I draw your attention to the great strides made by the government. In recent years, we have witnessed significant progress in the education sector under the leadership of the new Dawn government. There are several key achievements that we as educators must acknowledge. One, increased teacher recruitment. Government's efforts to reduce the teacher pupil ratio by recruiting more teachers has been a commendable step towards improving the quality of education. And Chief Tens Nazongwe joined the celebration as a teacher by profession. So I can't miss this day. This is our day. Being a teacher as a professional, I can't stop to be a teacher because it is my profession. Red Warrior, in District, Southern Province. Finally on our news, in Central Province, Shiwiyonji District Commissioner Alfred Shaputu has held teachers in the district for being a backbone of Zambia's development by shaping the future of the children. Tina Kabamba reports that Mr. Shaputu was speaking when hundreds of teachers in Shibuyunji joined the rest of the country in celebrating their day. Let's take a look. Shibuyunji District has celebrated Teachers Day in style under the theme Valuing Teachers' Voices Towards a New Social Contract for Education. The event, which was held at St. Stephen Catholic Church, was graced by Shibuyunji District Commissioner Alfred Shaputu. This year's theme resonates well with the new Dawn government's strides towards education sector because we believe in the words of Nelson Mandela that education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Shibuyunji District Education Board Secretary Hilda Mayuni emphasized the significance of teachers in shaping the future of Zambia. We want our learners to perform. And for our learners to perform, a teacher should be motivated. Remember our theme for this year's teacher celebration, valuing teacher voices. You are the voice that we need. Our school managers, the teacher is the voice that we need. Our children, they need to learn. Not just learning, they need to perform well. And Central Province Betu's senior trustee Godfrey Monga has commended government for the introduction of a free education policy, school grants, increased teacher recruitment, and infrastructure development. In recent years, we have replaced the significant progress in the education sector under the leadership of the new Dawn administration. There are several key achievements that we as educators have acknowledged. There is increased teacher recruitment. Government efforts to reduce the teacher, teacher population by recruiting more teachers has been a commendable uh, step towards improving quality education. The celebration included presentation of awards to outstanding teachers, recognizing their exceptional service and contribution to education in the district. Tina Kabamba reporting for Zanis in Shiwenji District, Central Province. As we end the news, a reminder of the top stories. Zesco recovers over four metric tons of stolen copper cables. Zambia, Burundi to connect optic fiber. Preparation for the Mtomolosa traditional ceremony advance. And Western stakeholders in discuss corporal punishment. On behalf of the entire Zanis crew and my sign language interpreter, Joyas Shikombwe, my name is Nora Chimopi. Stay blessed.